welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Lena Blazy, and today we're going to continue the conversation about the next generation sign standards. Specifically, we're going to look at the instructional piece. There is a lesson plan guide on the website. I'm not sure if you knew about that. Yes, many of us have searched the next generation sci science standards by disciplinary core idea or just the performance expectation, but I'm going to show you how you can organize yourself in order to present and integrate that into your classroom. Let's take a look. So let's take a look. This actually is the website for the Next Generation Science Standards. What you're going to want to do is select instruction and assessment, then go to evaluating NGSS design, then the lesson screener. Select that. Now, I already have it open because it can tend to run a little slow. So this is what comes up. You can select that directly in on that website page. And yeah, it's nine pages, but don't get all wrapped up in that. What I want you to do is to scroll down and you will see the features of quality design and then the NGSS ships, like the phenomena and the design solutions, the three dimensions and integrating the three dimensions, and then the relevance and authenticity, student ideas and building on student prior knowledge. Now, take some time, read that, but I wanted to focus on this piece. The lesson motivates students sense making or problem solving by taking advantage of student questions and prior experiences in the content of the student's home, neighborhood and community as appropriate. So when you're designing a lesson, it has to make sense to your students. So if you live in California, like me, and you're talking about the beach, and maybe you're talking about um, molecular states like solid, liquid and gas, and you're talking about when it's warm out and how water evaporates or when it starts to cool down, let's say you're going up to the high desert or even Big Bear and molecules start to slow down, you'll see a little bit more ice and maybe some snow, for example. You can have those conversations now with an assumption that students have seen that or talked about it. But if you start talking about things that they don't know about and it's way out of their scope, it's not authentic to their own neighborhood. So it could be a problem around the ecosystem in their area. For example, the desert doesn't have very much water. So how do the plants survive? That's the conversation for your students because it's relevant to them. So just think about that when you're creating your lesson. However, let's continue on. So in this next section, you see the criterion A, explaining phenomena or designing solutions. It specifically gives you a few prompts learning about the importance of explaining phenomena and designing solutions, record evidence. And then you can look and kind of play around with this information because in this area, it's asking you what was in the materials, where was it, and why is this evidence important? Now, it even lets you rate yourself. Now, this is really for you. Write your lesson out and then you get to rate yourself. And then if you move on to the next criterion B, it talks about the three dimensions. So what are you going to do in the three dimensions? Science and engineering practices, the disciplinary core ideas, and the cross-cutting concepts. And we'll go over that in another video, so don't fret. Then, criterion C, integrating the three dimensions from instruction and assessment. So now they're breaking it apart for you. And then criterion D, relevance and authenticity. Remember, is it relevant to your student population? Remember, every year you get a different group of students, so teaching can be very different from the previous year. And then you continue on to student ideas. What are the students thinking about this? Did you know that when students talk to each other peer to peer, they are more likely to put it to, into their long-term memory and to grapple with it more? When we stand and deliver, if I'm talking about molecular structure, I've done it for years and I know it very well. So there may be an assumption that they're getting it just as quickly. Based on the science of learning, that is not how it works at all. And finally, this area allows you to build on the student's prior knowledge. This entire document really allows you to self-evaluate to find out whether or not your students have mastered the knowledge, able to design or actually identify and create something new with the knowledge that they had and to build on prior knowledge. Now let's take a moment and look at a performance expectation, an actual standard. Now I'm gonna pick 
physical science, an area that I love to talk about. In another video, I'll talk about life science. And then over the next six months to a year, we're going to break down the standards individually. Now, I might stick with standards that I'm used to, but it'll at least give you an overview on how you can actually tackle these standards where it's fun and you don't feel very overwhelmed with actually implementing the science standards. Now let's actually look at one of the standards. Now, typically I like to skip this and just jump right into the word search. Why? Because that area doesn't actually show me the discipline. It only shows me disciplinary core idea. And if you ever drop that down, you get a lot to look at. I like to break it down a little bit. So I select one of the disciplines, physical science, and then I'm going to type in a word that I like. I love talking about molecules. So I'm going to select molecule and I'm going to select submit. When I do this, I already know I'm going to get a lot of middle school and high school, but I can break that down. Do we talk about molecules in K-5? Yes, but we use a little bit different vocabulary. So let's select one of these. This one says develop models to describe the atomic composition of simple molecules and extended structures. When we click on this one, this is what we get. We get the performance expectation, the science and engineering practices, the disciplinary core ideas, and the cross-cutting concepts. You want to dive into this, seems like a lot, but it's not, especially if you have a background in science. And if you don't, that's okay, we can get you through. So develop models to describe the atomic composition of simple molecules and extended structures. That was what you saw on the first page, but now it breaks it down a little bit further. It's asking you to clarify, uh, emphasize, emphasis on developing models of molecules that vary in complexity, like H2O, um, CH4, you know, things like that. But and we're not, I'm going to show you this another day with my molecule kit, but not right now. So when you're looking at this, you, you, it, you see a lot. You, when you look at the science and engineering practices, actually read these. This states developing and using models. Now, that first statement, if you have a background in physical science or you've taught it for a while, that's not going to be too overwhelming. You know the expectation. You know the performance expectation. You know that standard. Science and engineering practices. Science is the study of the natural world, the physical world. Engineering is what we do with the physical world, the design process with the natural world. So modeling in 6.8 builds on K-5 uh, progresses or progresses to developing using and revising models to describe, test, predict more abstract phenomena and design systems. Develop a model to predict and describe phenomena. You already know if you have a molecule kit, you could do that. Now, you can probably do that physically, and we'll demonstrate that in another video. And then it says disciplinary core ideas. That's you talking about structure and properties of matter. What's the structure of the molecule? Not too difficult, so to take a moment and read that. Substances are made from different types of atoms. Okay, great, let's jump down to the last bullet. Solids may be formed from molecules or they may extend, be extended structures with repeating subunits, like crystals. Hmm, this doesn't seem too difficult when you break it down. Take some time with this. And you don't need to be an expert the first year. You can just get better every year and your students will help you through it. They're good at being creative. And then cross-cutting concepts, scale, proportions, and quantity. Time, space, and energy phenomena can be observed at various scales using models to study systems that are too large or too small. So when we create an atom um, or the structure of an atom or a structure of a molecule like H2O, we already know that one molecule of water is really small to see, but we can create that structure. So that's what it's asking you to do. Now, if you look at the bottom, it's asking you to integrate literacy in English language arts and mathematics. I'm not going to touch on that right now. I do want you to, but I have some thoughts around that, especially with the mathematical practices, because we can do some computational math with the uh, molecules. But let's just jump over to the right here. See that? It says evidence statements. My favorite. Now take a look at this. All of this is going to stay the same, but down here, it's going to change up on you a little bit. So when I select this, it gets a little bit longer. And you now have an area that gives you the observable features of the student performance by the end of the course. That's what they have to know by the end of this 
performance expectation, which it builds on some other performance expectations. But this, components of the model. Can they describe the individual atom? Do they know what molecule they're talking about? Is it a crystal? Is it um, a molecule that is polarized? Extended structures with repeating subunits. We know crystals tend to repeat. Substances, solids, liquids, and gases at the micro level. This doesn't seem too difficult right now. Relationships, what are the relationships with the atoms? And then the connections. How can students connect this? So take a moment and read through this. This isn't that difficult. Many of you are experts already, but this should help you, I think, more than this bottom piece. Yes, we want the students to write about it. We want them to talk about it, listening and speaking. And we, we also want them to use reasoning and, and abstractly and quantitatively. But I would argue mathematical practices, I'll do that separately in another video because I think that they are missing a few here. Um, maybe we shouldn't tell NGSS, or maybe we should. So take some time, have fun with this, and come back for more information because in the coming weeks, I'm going to demonstrate this lesson using my molecule kit. Thank you so much for joining me on my YouTube channel. Please make sure you select like and subscribe, and come back at least once a week so you can get the latest information on how I'm explaining the next generation. and you can integrate this all day long. Thank you so much, and I hope that you enjoy your time with NGSS.